Welcome back to the Mr. Showtime Podcast. In this video, I'm going to weigh in on the two controversies that took place last weekend between the Wallabies and the All Blacks. Now, that match uh, it was really painful to watch. Right? I, I, regardless of what country you're from, you don't need to be an Australian. It, it was just painful to watch. Okay? And if obviously if you if you're a New Zealander, it's a it's a it felt like a huge uh, weight have been taken taken off your back, right? But regardless, it was just so painful to watch because the Wallabies had it in the bag. They had won. How many times is the Wallabies gonna just keep getting unlucky in the in the last seconds of the match? I mean, these two match, these matches between these two countries, the the these two Bledisloe uh, Test teams, tends to be in the last minutes that is is just very tight, and usually uh, it turns out to be the Wallabies that are suffering a heartbreak after working so hard throughout the whole match, getting in front. And then something happens in the last second where the All Blacks just, they just break Wallaby's hearts. <laughs> happened in 2017 when, you know, that re that reset. And then, you know, it was Kieran Reed, Perinara, and then Bowling Barrett just waiting for the try. It was just painful. And again, last weekend was yet another heartbreak for the Wallabies. You know, so many people want the All Blacks to lose because they've been dominating for so long, right? And yeah, I felt the same. <laughs> I felt the same way. <laughs> I thought the, the the Wallabies, you know, all they had to do was just kick it out. Now, I'm gonna show you a video of what took place um, in that those last seconds of the match. Have a look. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just talking about Adam. 
uh, what we knew was the time was out and he told the boys to play to play but of course the clock stopped so there's no real urgency to do that and uh, yeah I, I don't know it's uh, it makes a little bit of feel for such an important moment in the game and and so you know you would have thought kick it out let's uh, play out the last couple of minutes have you ever seen anything like it? no worst thing you've one of the worst things you've ever seen? Oh, I'll reserve comment on that but um yeah I'll look it's it's a tough one to take okay so you saw uh Bernard Foley, his first test appearance since uh, the last rugby World Cup back in 2019. And it, would, it seemed like, you know, he, he had a good welcome back uh, reunion with these Wallabies uh, uh, playmates, right? And it actually ends up being him that is responsible for their, for their loss. Because that center, uh, Ikitao, he was so hard to uh, secure the turnover. And you can see from the video, the backline players behind him, they were like screaming along with, uh, what, Jed Holloway. He was screaming like, Ben, kick! Ben, kick! For God's sake, Ben, kick! And then, frrr, penalty was overturned. Painful to watch. Absolutely painful. Now, one might make an argument that, uh... Bernard Foley didn't. He, he he claimed by his his own words, he said he heard the referee say time off. So in his mind, he was waiting for you know the players to to you know. He uh, his his forwards were busy chatting. I don't know uh, on on his left hand side, and he was waiting for the referee to say okay time back on, but at the same time, Ben. One might make the argument that hey. The referee said, time back on, and then he said, kick, kick. He told him multiple times, go ahead, kick. And it came across as, like, Bernard Foley was trying to waste away time because, you know, they were at the, you know, uh, five meter line and there was, there was only like one minute left, less than two minutes left on, on the clock. So it came across as Ben, like Bernard Foley was trying to just waste away some time. But it's a silly move anyway because you, you had a penalty, you can just kick it uh, into touch and then walk slowly towards uh, the, the, your line-out. And then from there on, just win the, uh, win the line-out and just kick it out and then there you won. You know, it, it, it's just sad, you know, for the, for, for the Wallabies. E even I, as, as a South African, it was just very, very, absolutely sad and painful to watch, you know. But I'm not going to... The referee is not at fault. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, all you test rugby nations, you're not going to think you ride this bandwagon of blaming the referee because there's only one team in, test, in world rugby that has a right. And the... the, the, the the, va the valid argument to say we have a refereeing uh, issue when it comes to when we play. The concept of, you know, it's the Springboks playing against not 15 men, but 16 men. The 16th man being the referee. That's a Springbok concept. We have ownership of that. That's our plight. That's our fight. It's our plight and our plight alone. Because you know what it is, you, you, you've seen it throughout, uh, thing, thing, throughout the previous seasons. So, no, in this particular scenario, uh, the referee is not at fault. The referee, the referee made the right uh, call. Moving on to the other controversy of um, Wallabies lock Darcy Swain intentionally injuring Kuntupaya, breaking his knee. Personally, I would have given him a red card because the rock was secured there's no way he could have possibly made a a a a a, a, a reasonable clean out and you can see from the picture I'm about to uh, display he intentionally went for his knee that was not a clean out that was an intentional uh, 
uh, attempt to injure another player, to take a, a player out. Now, stuff, stuff like that really offends me personally. Because my dreams of a Vasta Cup uh, call-up uh, was, was, was ended in a very similar fashion in university, the, the Vasta Cup tournament. I was taken out in pretty, pretty much the same way. I was on my way, I was running downfield, right? Just made an intercept, running downfield. And someone, a defender was behind me, intentionally injured me, taking me out the game. When a player uh, injures you, uh, injure, injures another player, taking out his knee. That's a five-month sideline injury, at, 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 to say the least. Nine months, ten months injury. You don't come back the same. So, nah, Darcy Swain should, should be cited to the fullest extent of the law. Because that was the intentional uh, attempt to take out a player. Uh, so, uh, moving on to um, to SA Rugby uh, news. Um, Owen Gomani asked a question over at uh, the final Whistle Rugby show. And he was talking about that incident uh, in particular. And he asked a question. Would you as a coach... Would I, as a coach, if I was a coach from a coaching perspective, would I forgive a player for not uh, for not uh, uh, committing to the rap? I answered him. I answered him. I'm sorry. It's for the public. <laughs> the public. My question is quite simple. As a coach, and would you give enough power to a player to say, Coach, I could not clean there because when I scanned, there was no target for me to hit. If I did, I was pilled on the side, I would have injured somebody. Would you accept that as a coach, if a player gave you that reason for not hitting a rap? What, whatever reason, we're chasing the game, is your enforcer, and says, nah, you can have the ball. Depends How would you view it as a coach? That is my question. And my answer to that is yes. You know why? Because there's other phases to, 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 to go to. There's other phases. List. You want to uh, concede a penalty. So yes, if I was a coach, I would forgive a player for not uh, going into the ruck to avoid a incident like that one. Because you can, uh, you, there's other phases to go to, right? And you don't want to concede a penalty and you, you know and conceding points. So my my answer to that is yes, I would forgive a player for not. You know, with reason, I would forgive a player for not uh, committing to the ruck and con uh, uh, conceding unnecessary penalties, right? So, that's my take. That's Mr. Showtime's take on the last weekend's controversy. Uh, I hope you enjoy. Please like, subscribe, and share this video. And till next time, cheers.